How are you? I have a giveaway for you. at the end of this thing. Remind me. Chris is gone this week. Young people and your healthy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's healthy. All right, everyone, I guess it's time for us to go and get started. I uh, officially call this meeting to order here. Uh, this is Tuesday, March 18th for the City of Moorhead Arts and Culture Commission, uh, 4.30 p.m. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just follow our printed agenda, which is available on the, uh, on the website. So we'll get started. First off, we need to approve our minutes from our previous meeting. We took a hiatus during the month of February because of a lack of um, items to be covered by the committee, by the commission, excuse me. So uh, our last meeting was January 22nd. There was nothing in February. I want to take a moment to look at those and let me know if there's anything they'd like to add or change or edit. I move to approve the minutes as submitted. Second. Sorry. My, my Move to approve. <laughs> Any, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as admitted, please uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Then we approve mo moving the minutes forward there. Those are uh, approved. Uh, next point. Any citizens to be heard? We have not really per se. Okay, so we have, since seeing there are none here moving forward, we go to our fifth item on our agenda, the Work Art Museum Proposal Review. So at this point, I hand it off and let us know what uh, we're looking at here. So the city was approached by the Rourke Art Museum um, to expand the scope of their lease. The city of Moorhead owns the facility and land and there is a long-term lease with the Rourke um, and so the city needs to give written approval for their concept and their concept is to add a sculpture area with a prairie on the south side of the building which would consume two existing parking spaces. Um, that prairie area would also be um, a stormwater management type of thing and so there would be some possible grading uh, changes within that um, parking area um, to help support that um, stormwater. So just reviewing the proposal of their changes. I don't believe on, and Sue, please help me since you were part of uh, my information source. I don't believe that it includes adding the gate at this time. So it's just the, the <clears throat> parking lot transformation into the sculpture area. So if you look at the drawing on page four, um, it wouldn't include that mm -hmm. gate or the change in the, the masonry fence at this time. Where is the proposed sculpture now? I'm not. Uh, it's in storage. Oh, okay. Oh, it's already owned by the Rourke or gifted. It's to the been Rourke. donated to the Rourke. Yeah, it was one of the sculptures that was part of the um, Plains Art Museum's outdoor sculpture. They have that pad, and it rotates every three or four years or so. Sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So just so, because um, I think what's been included in our packet, um, it might be hard, it might not fully, just so everybody's clear about the scope of the project. Um, Long Spur Prairie Fund is um, the one who is working to develop the micro prairie on the southwest corner with obviously the permission of the Rourke. It's kind of a joint project, but they're applying for Oh, I know the acronym. I can't remember the full name, but it's LCCRM grant. It's legacy funds from the state of Minnesota that go to environmental um, and cultural developing. Um, historically, a lot of this funds have gone to the University of Minnesota and the DNR. So um, it's a really nice opportunity to bring some out of the metro area. Um, what they would like to do in addition to creating the micro prairie and placing the sculpture is they want to regrade um, the north half of the parking lot so that um, there will be a collection area of rain and storm water in the micro prairie itself. Um, I brought off another print off that I can pass around um, that's more recent. 
So uh, the project probably won't happen if they don't receive the grant. The total cost of the project, including um, reconstruction of the parking lot and paying um, consultants and staff for their hours, is roughly around $65,000. Um, they are applying for the small grant, which is up to $250,000. <laughs> and then there's the big grant, which is plus from there. So um, it's a very large pool of money that they're going for. So um, this will be sort of considered phase one for the overall reimagining of the southern area of the Rourke. Um, phase two, what they would like to hopefully do, and again, if they can get more funding and everything, is open up that back um, brick wall to create an opening into the courtyard and make that back entry more accessible and inviting to the public. Uh -huh. So this is the first part of that. All right. Was but that's only what we're considering is this part, not that second aspect of opening the wall. Just curious. They're, they're going to remove the transformer that's in there, or is that what stay and just be part of it, or what? No, so the transformer box that's currently there has, um, so just so everybody knows, um, the Longspur Prairie Fund uh, has brought me on board as a consultant to help with all of this. So, and I'm also a member of the Rourke Art Museum board. <laughs> Small town. <laughs> <It is. laughs> um, <laughs> So the box that's currently there is a transformer box. We looked into a little bit of relocating that, but there's so, I mean, it's like peeling an onion. There's so many layers and things that could happen with relocating that transformer box. So that is going to stay. It does have a door. The access panel for the transformer box is on the west side. So after speaking with Travis Schmidt at MPS, um, we talked about just making sure that there was a clear path to access that panel that extends at least 10 feet from the door facing straight west. So if they need to get in there with their tools and everything, they have access. So um, I don't know. On one of the newer sketches, there is plans to put in a path so it won't be taken over with plants. plants. And then an understanding that no tall plants go near that path because of the equipment and the need to access that. Um, we're also talking a little bit about possibly um, putting a wrap on the box. MPS has historically said no to these proposals because of all the maintenance issues and the regulations around you know, accessibility and the visual information with the warnings and everything on these utility boxes. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also a conversation that we're having about how can we address that and make it safe for everybody and make the utility boxes visible for the MPS guys and girls. Um, so yeah, so hopefully, we can do something with that as well. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, Kim, I might ask for your help on this. I'm drawing a bit of a blank, but we did just update uh, the policy for like a rain garden and some things in the right of way as far as in berms and properties. Um, so there was two different. Um, like there was a rain gar like full on rain garden with filtration system and other things. So there was sort of two tiers of that kind of environmental um, interference, I guess. And I can't remember what the second one was. But is that something that this group has been made aware of? That the different policy not entirely. Okay. And I, and this was a newer proposal, so we wanted this group to look at the scope, and then we'll have our engineers once details become more available with the project scope of exactly because also whatever the drainage mm -hmm. changes will also need to be probably considered just to make sure that it doesn't negatively impact the library's parking as well. So <clears throat> there'll be additional oversight by other groups just making sure that the general concept of this would be um, that this group would think is in alignment with. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's already conversations with MPS, which is great because that's always the conversation is who would be liable to, um, if they had to have good access to some, some of the wires or cables or other things there, who would rehab and replace that too. So I just wanted to make sure that was something that was brought into mm -hmm. consideration. Thank you. Um, I, I think in many ways this seems uh, almost a, 
a small scope. Um, when I, you just, I think about the imprint of how much um, concrete we have on that on that block, um, and this to me seems like a a reasonable and a small step in a good direction to maybe decrease a little bit of the concrete footprint, um, and and also help make the Rourke more uh, inviting because it it is it's a it's a beautiful asset, but it's it even itself is very hard surfaced, and um, I'm glad that parts of the wall have been changed to fence. But even so, it still has a a rather imposing presence, and I think um, the addition of more green space um, would only benefit both the museum and that that whole block. Uh, give it a little bit more of an inviting sense, I think, particularly around the library would be a nice place to have more green space. So, I agree for, uh, for the same reasons. And I, when, as I look at the photograph here, too, of the, of the proposed sculpture, I'm just wondering, speaking of concrete, is, hmm. is that, uh, that concrete base intended to be, I mean, is that, is that part of the installation? Will that? I don't believe so. I think okay. that's, that was taken at the planes. Okay. Yeah. So that's their platform for rotating the sculptures. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. I'll be embedded in the ground, I assume. So there would be even even less of a concrete footprint than. Yeah, if you look now. if you look at the rendition on the right side of page or the left side of page four, you can see how low the legs come to the um, base of the. You yeah. Know, the 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 I can't talk today. The right. grass. Yeah. Okay. Ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grass? <laughs> What's grass? I haven't seen grass in six months. I, know. I don't know what that looks like. That's why I couldn't get it. <laughs> and um, Sue, do you know um, if the entryway that then is proposed in the wall, <clears throat> is that a part of the next phase? Or is there, uh, it, it seems like there's this lovely sculpture, but it's not actually going to live inside the sculpture garden of the museum yeah. at the moment. So. My understanding is that the Rourke Art Museum is its a broader picture of how they can really use that courtyard and have full access in and out. Got it. Um, because even the courtyard, is, which is beautiful, is limited by how you can access it. Right. Um, so having the south side of the building be more inviting. Um, so this is one, this is the first piece of a much bigger. Of a much bigger plan, plan. yeah. Great. Any further discussion then? Entertain a motion from someone? Also move. Motion to approve, I guess technically it would be to approve to forward it to the, to whom? Endorse probably. Endo endorse, yeah, endorse. To the city council. City council, mm -hmm. okay, so um, someone a second? I'll second. second. Tim and Tim. All right. In that case, all those in favor of endorsing to move forward to the City Council, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. In this case, then we, uh, the ayes have it. We approve. Move forward to the City Council. Endorse it. The next uh, item, number six, moving down the agenda. Uh, reports and information on the um, call for art update, water tower and forecast. Let's start with the call for art update. The deadline closed just this last week, so I'm curious to know how it went. What do we have? <laughs> So we have six proposals that were submitted, right. ranging um, from performing to visual arts. So I, I was pretty impressed that it, it wasn't just all visual art. I mm -hmm. kind of was assuming that. Um, and so they all have a various budgets, none of which go to the maximum. So um, as that selection process occurs, we'll probably um, maybe see two of the proposals, if not more, depending mm. on how they get prioritized. Excellent. Great. Can I ask, because we included the option if the applicant would be willing to take a lesser amount, how many of the six said they would be willing to do that? Do you know offhand? Or? I don't know okay. offhand. <laughs> I, geez, I can't. Can you just remind us when was the, uh, <laughs> when are the deadlines moving forward for the uh, the, what's the next phase, phase of it? Yeah. So the next phase will be uh, having the art review team come together 
and start reviewing and, and prioritizing the projects per the criteria in the policy. And then from there, we'll advance it to this committee for another conversation. Um, and since we also have the component of not just having a, somebody proposing a work, we have to figure out how the funding kind of coincides with how we envision the process mm -hmm. of a fully funded project. Um, and so I think that'll be the steps. And so getting the group, I think, is it Sue and Tim Wollensine, I believe, were designated at our last meeting. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd circle that back. <laughs> Never know what happens. Uh, Fine with that. Okay, <laughs> that was one re another reason why I wanted to circle back and remind <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Um, so I'll be working on scheduling that. I just wanted to see what we had for um, how many proposals to review to know what time frames we would want to pencil in getting, instead of getting too ahead, far ahead of ourselves and then not having enough time or too much time. So is a tentative plan for us to see the um, next phase as a commission at the, our next meeting or two months from now? I'm not sure. We'll have to see how the scheduling of meetings and um, if there's any weather or flood events that may <laughs> adjust workloads and scheduling. Okay. All right. Did we did we say did we set a date or roughly a date for when the the awardees would be announced? Was it May? We did. We did, but I can't recall what it was. Yeah. Right. It, it does say um, that. March and April would be the review time, and then that the prioritization and council consideration would be May. Yeah. We want to give them the possibility of completing it during the summer. Obviously, especially if it's a performing arts event, it might be something that they literally, if this doesn't happen in the next four months, it's not going to happen type of thing. So. Yeah, right. okay. okay. Excellent. All right. All right. Water tower art update then. All right. Let's see. So there are. We have, as a guest today, we have Carrie Lee Kinslow here to talk about the south side water tower. So we have two water tower projects that are underway. We've got the south side tower, which will be con start construction this coming summer, correct? Correct. And then we have the I-94 water tower that has a deadline of September 1st to be completed, but that has a separate process. Um, and so we'll really focus on the South Side Tower at this time. Well, first of all, hello, everybody. Thank you. Hello, Mary. <laughs> nice to, nice have you to see you again. Mm -hmm. hey. It's been a while. Um, I'm glad you're all surviving this, this wonderful weather we're having. Um, yeah, so I had the pleasure of being the, um, the facilitator for this project, and I have enjoyed it thoroughly. So I'm glad to be here to be able to update you on the process and what we're looking at right now. Um, we had the public forum. We sent out data, collected the survey results, and um, formulated a design committee. So we all gathered that information to help formulate a concept and a theme that we thought was appropriate, that the community would really um, enjoy, um, appropriate to the feedback that they gave us. Uh, so when we decided on the major themes. Um, first of all, we decided we obviously <laughs> needed to have two designs, one kind of pie in the sky design, uh, max budget, hoping for, for everything to, to go well, but then also one more simplified design um, for a minimal budget. Uh, the committee prefers the wraparound design. Um, they also really uh, liked the central theme of the word moorhead on the, the water tower itself. Um, and also having it cohesively tie into the other towers that have been previously made, uh, the Woodlawn Tower and the North slash Oakport Tower. Um, and I will actually pass around, I'll send one either way. These are the <clears throat> preliminary designs that the design committee has come up with thus far. And while there might be some tweaking, um, the committee has actually approved these designs to go forward and um, become endorsed by you and the, the city of Moorhead and the Moorhead Public Service Commission. So 
as you can see with this the design there is also on the page that I handed out to you a black and white simplified version <clears throat> but because we haven't actually shown this to the Moorhead um, Public Service Commission yet we wanted to, to keep it kind of um, down low <laughs> uh, so could you talk a little bit about the shape of the tower and sure. why there's a straight line on the bottom? Absolutely. So this tower is a composite tower. Uh, the last tower was a conical shape. It was that spheroid shaped tower, which actually kind of came with a few little um, issues in the design making itself because you had to really um, distort and kind of uh, work with that shape since it was rounded like that. <coughs> This shape is more f flat. Obviously, you don't have to cut any um, bias pieces in, into that design. So it was a lot easier to work with. We did think about actually using the bottom part of the tower, but it served as, it seemed to be a little bit more complicated than we wanted to make the design. It's a lot of space. It's a, it's a much bigger uh, water tower. And um, the, the wraparound design is already covering a lot of ground. We have um, all the bold colors uh, that are seen in the Woodlawn Tower, but that orange from the Oakport Tower is actually brought in with the wheat. So I really think the designers did an excellent job of making it very cohesive there. Um, as far as the blue stem, I think it serves to kind of bring in that that spherical, round, almost logo-looking design brand that we had on the other two towers without it being uh, exactly the same. So, and it's very recognizable. Uh, the, the color choice, Stephen, was just super clever in using the blue and blue stem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then even that, that sunset <clears throat> that really highlights that the, theatrical performance behind the guitarist there in that, on that stage. Um, some of the things that uh, the committee really, really um, enjoyed were the elements of family and recreation. So we have a lot of um, double meaning kind of icons and symbols working in the design. So you have the the woman running with her dog and the man the man running, the children running with their kites, the golfer. So you have all these these recreational symbols, but they also kind of double, double that meaning for family, which is, was a really big theme that came up within all of the survey and the, and the, the, the forum itself. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so w when you said, um, <clears throat> when, you, when you were describing the, the photo or the graphic uh, and, and you mentioned something about guitar, <laughs> um, the guitarist that now that you said that it makes sense but when I first saw it I thought it looked like a person holding a gun ah. and and I don't know if that was just I mean if that was obviously that was my first impression right and right. so uh, you know the guitar makes sense but I guess you could use your imagination and I have to say I also I didn't see a gun. I simply found the absence of the rest of the body yeah. oh. a little bit muddy. It, it, um, it's less clear than letting the moorhead and the arch be there by themselves as their own thing without another human image <clears throat> in that particular part of the design. The other human images are very clear in what they're doing. The guitarist took me several looks, okay. even this close. So I, I thought, I don't know if it serves, as well as the blue stem on its own, right. which is more <clears throat> encompassing of not just one art form or performance form or performance instrument mm -hmm. or, right. or audience. We or kind audience. of went through all of those yep. iterations. Or, I'd, I'd probably know. lean toward it. Honestly, if I, if I didn't see the performer in the middle, I wouldn't think it was blue stem. I just think it was a pretty arch design. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't catch a connotation without a person there. So I'd, I'd lean towards it. I agree. Yeah. I just wonder, and I know this is later in the process, but right. if one person is unclear as to what the design is and another person is seeing a gun, I think it's worthy to have a conversation right um, <laughs> but I wonder if it couldn't be replaced by I mean blue stem doesn't have curtains but the suggestion of curtains or a microphone or because microphone might, might be helpful that in that might instance, better too. encompass 
all the art forms that happen at Blue Even Stem. a microphone to the side of the guitarist right. would, would help to tip off more what you're staring at. Or if behind, I don't know if we want to add a second musician or, you know, like cymbals from a, a drum set, you know, something to suggest more than just the solo performer. I think um, part of part of that issue too is uh, how many silhouettes are created and how much we can add on to that design too. So again, it goes back to that like double meaning. Um, you know, the the blue stem is well placed and it it doesn't always read as the blue stem, but that's part of its charm is that it 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 frames the image while also serving as that icon for a part of Southern Moorhead that is is really important, but. Um, but I see, I see what you're saying, you know, as well. But it, it and I, see the and it's, I see the flying turkey in the. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. turkeys. It Just is. Kidding, no I turkeys. see that. No turkeys, no turkeys in all caps. <laughs> it's, it's a con. Action. Will the the Moorhead face? Will it be towards I-94? It will be. It will be facing north. Yes. Facing north. The it will be. It will be facing towards the interstate. Yes. Just one. One side. Okay. Um, I just want to say too, it's a conversation that happened on previous towers, uh, Woodlawn in particular, where um, we included the the Stav Church mm -hmm. and the Berquist Cabin, not, and we realized like people aren't going to know if they're new to Moorhead if they're right. just passing through. But it's a conversation starter, you know, like what is that thing that looks all Norwegian? Right. Okay, that's the Stav Church. You can go to the, you know, and we can have that conversation with our guests. Absolutely. Oh, good. Um, any other concerns or suggestions or feedback? <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the things that the the community mentioned was school colors. Um, I will say that that was a complication because even though we tried to do that, we have so much mm -hmm. academia <laughs> that it becomes a, a problem it, that would be a lot of colors right so it really was again just implementing youth and family and having those icons serve multiple purposes um, so I think that's one of the reasons we we settled on a lot of these simple icons uh, being in South Moorhead it's in, it is in a newer part of the city and um, recreation is a, a the the biggest theme, recreation and nature were the biggest themes of uh, the community feedback and the design committee. So, okay. and we, we had a, um, the, uh, the Concordia tree was one of the, uh, one of the icons that people wanted to put in there and mm -hmm. I actually really enjoy it. I think it's fun. <laughs> I think everybody recognizes it. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of us have taken pictures and brought our children or had wedding photos or graduation photos by that tree. So yep. um, I was happy to see that there. One of the early iterations had the Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> and so that didn't stay. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably best. So um, we have, we've, we have redeveloped it a few times. We've pulled the design further apart. Um, but you know, it, I, I'm really grateful for the feedback and I will make sure that we have further discussion on the I just want to add one more phone. thing. Um, I absolutely adore the children flying the kite in the more elaborate design. If that design won't fit in the budget, I would humbly suggest that taking the female looking silhouette mm -hmm. and swapping her out for the adult so we have at least one child in the more simplified design, being that <laughs> stressing family was so important right. in the community right. feedback. And here um, I was going to suggest the golfer. Either way, but <laughs> I think having one of the children flying a kite absolutely um, in the more simplified design would be excellent. Yep, I, I would agree. So, they're they're yeah. delightful. Mm -hmm. And I love that the performer on Blue Stem, even with the issue of the guitar, is gender neutral. Yes. Is there a, what would you like from us at this point? Well. Aside from our first look that you got. <laughs> um, there will be uh, some more tweaking on this design, but we will be taking this design uh, to MPS, and then after that, asking the for city for okay. 
endorsement on that does on that design. The bidding doesn't come back until after April 9th, um, which April 2nd is our in <coughs> Moorhead public service mm -hmm. date. And then uh, the final designs will be presented to Moorhead City on April 22nd. So that's the schedule. Thanks for your hard work on it. That's really Thank good. you, Thank Carrie. You. Trying my best, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate the feedback. You know, it's this, this commission is the commission that pushed this forward to begin with. And I think it's a, a very valuable project. And it gives such um, vibrance to our city and really gives us an identity. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that's going to continue because of the Arts and Culture Commission. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So I'm really appreciating the fact that there is definitely an effort to unify these in some regard. I mean, they're not just all random, mm -hmm. right. let's create the next yeah. crazy tower project type of thing. So you can see, uh, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the next, because they're all evolving, but they're all obviously linked, which is great. I have to say, Stephen, Stephen um, Dorsey and Jack Lundy have done a fantastic job. They're the easiest gentlemen to work with and they are so intuitive. Um, they're flexible. They're fast. <laughs> they're fast. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, there has been nights when we have all been emailing back and forth, and you know, Stephen turns around and finds something that he can tweak really mm. quick, and and uh, pushes it out the next day. So we have a we have a great team. So, but okay. that's it. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. All right. Kim, uh, our next uh, update here, Forecast Public Art Workshop, making it public. So I was just going to let you know that we had approved that at the end of last year, and mm -hmm. it's still in process. It was put slightly on hold just because of some delays on uh, from the NEA due to the government shutdown and notifications and a few other things, but it's still in progress, but just it was delayed a little bit, so just keeping it on the radar. <laughs> it's uh, out there. <laughs> <laughs> and then moving on to the next one, I just wanted to uh, extend an invitation to the two open houses that will be occurring this week. We've got the, I think the first one is the 12th Avenue South Corridor, um, and then the Center Avenue. So if you're able, please come out and share your thoughts and ideas on the status of those corridor studies. Can I? Kim, will oh. there be cookies? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, important questions. Well, I need to know if I can bring my three-year-old. <laughs> 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 cookies go a long way. Kim will bring a cookie. <laughs> Typically, there are refreshments, but I cannot guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, uh, at this point, what are the discussions out of curiosity of, of the redesign of, of um, 12th Avenue South, has there been any, is this the initial first phase? Has there already been some ideas of what they're planning or thinking of doing? I think or? this will, the, the invitation explains a lot, but I think they will be coming up. So they had a previously a public meeting late last year that kind of just explored what the possibilities were or could be. And then I think now they've done some of the traffic analysis and a few other things and uh, rolled up their sleeves. And so I think they will have some kind of preliminary designs for people to react to. Uh, I would like to also extend an invitation to um, everyone. Uh, tomorrow begins a, um, a three month long series of art and business breakfasts um, sponsored by um, Microsoft and a couple of other uh, consensus council, um, but hosted by the Arts Partnership at the Umcomp Center. Um, so beginning tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow, the guest of honor is David Brown, who is the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce of Omaha. Uh, and so he'll be in town to take people's questions about particularly how arts and business sectors can work together to really um, increase community pride and economic development. And um, each of these breakfasts, one per month for the next three months, uh, will be hosted at the MCOMP Center um, with um, uh, chairs of economic development and CEOs um, from three different communities that are similarly sized to the Fargo-Moorhead 
uh, area. So the Art and Business Breakfast Series is open. Um, there are to a certain number of spots, and it begins tomorrow morning at 7.30 till 9 with a light breakfast and um, open format with David Brown. So I just wanted to make sure that all of the members of the Art and Culture Commission know they're welcome to attend, um, and also any other uh, folks in town, any other business owners or, um, or government people who you think would be important to be there. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of information and good ideas um, about how Omaha uh, and a couple of other cities have really helped to increase economic development by leveraging their arts community. Can I ask for the, the meeting tomorrow, the 12th Avenue South, where is Bierkland Ber Lounge. Lounge off at Concourse? Where on campus it's is It's inside the Offutt School of Business. Okay. Um, I think if you, you can enter either the parking lot side or the 8th Street side and, and it, it's fairly. But it's right, it's right in between the gym and the, and the, um, and the rec center there, isn't it? Is it? I believe it is. Oh, is it okay. that? Is it that concourse that between, the, the, basketball concourse between the, the basketball oh, okay. and the? Between the basketball and the, yes. I got you. You're right. Uh, yeah, right. So right where the tickets, the ticket ticket sales are. Yes. Okay, that makes You're sense. You're right. Sorry, I was thinking okay. it was. Office is over in the south, east yeah. corner. Yes. And you're talking northwest. Okay. Correct. Mm. Sorry. Yes. Don't listen to me. Did I don't know? know Concordia at all. <laughs> I only walk grass. through that every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, since we're sharing, um, I would like to invite everybody to the Lake Agassiz Concert Band's yeah. spring concert. It's March 24th at 3 o'clock, Horizon Middle School Performing Arts Center, which is an amazingly wonderful space, great acoustics. Um, this is a special concert for the group because they will be awarding the third annual Allego Grant, which is a $1,000 grant given to a local um, middle junior or high school band program. And this year it's going to Oak Grove? Oak Grove or Grace Lutheran? I think I did. Yes, I think it's right. Oak, Oak Grove. Grove. Oak Grove um, Lutheran School to purchase a marimba, which they don't have and Kenyon can tell you how important they that need. is. <laughs> Trust me. That's great. I've taught there's some they need. <laughs> so March twenty fourth, three PM. Three PM, yep, Sunday. Um, uh, since we're doing the public comments, uh, something struck me, and I, I'd love to show you folks some, something interesting I, I bounced into. I was, <laughs> this sounds like bragging, but um, I was in Cuba this time last week in Havana, and, uh, <laughs> and while I was down there doing studies, um, I bounced into a neighborhood that's pre apparently pretty world famous called Fusterlandia, which I'd never heard of before. And it's literally a neighborhood where an artist who is inspired by Picasso and Gaudi started decorating his fence and his, his house, of his head fence, excuse me, with broken, tile, with broken tile murals. And next thing you know, he started doing his house and his neighbors thought they were so nice, they said, would you mind doing the same thing to ours? So he's kind of taken over this entire neighborhood of, uh, this entire neighborhood is this really out there exotic tile work and what's really cool is he's gotten the people in the neighborhood to communicate he once he, once they he gets shows them what to do they begin doing it themselves he helps out and also there's lots of tiles that are then created by children in the neighborhood that are then inserted in the walls and in the art so it's about like three square blocks of just art the whole everything the, the fences the garages the houses are covered in art it's really amazing and it's an incredible tourists you know coming by all the time to see this too is a part of it so if you um if you want to check it out uh, online, Fuster, F U S T E R, Landia, L E N D I A, Fuster Landia, really beautiful example of public art created from the grassroots up, where the people said, I like that, I'll do it. And they just did it, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, actually, I came home and asked my wife if we could talk about doing that to our fence, and she said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but uh, anyways, it's very, very unique and something that the kind of thing that just I'd love to spread. People can see that and you go, wow, that's really not that hard to do. Literally broken pieces of ceramics, mm. some, some cement and some time. Yeah. You can, you can make some very, very unique things. therapeutic to do it, too, yeah, the some, activity some itself. Yeah, unique things. So. Oh. But anyways, and really enjoyed that uh, public art spectacle there. Um, yeah. Other comments or things happening in the city in the near future? 
Uh, we have one more weekend of Blackbird at Theater B. Um, three performances, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night at 7.30. Um, and that's, yeah. <laughs> If that's all we have to add then, at this point, um, I go ahead and uh, I, should I take a motion to adjourn? Is there a motion to adjourn for these usually? I can't remember. Just, oh. just adjourn, okay. Excellent. At this point, we'll go ahead and adjourn our meeting for uh, March 18th. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Good job. For what it's worth. Yeah.